So this is week five, and we have this topic processing forms with ExpressJS, and we'll be talking about HTML forms a bit. But I am expecting that you people are already uh, very good, have a very good understanding of the of the forms in your two two two. Of course, web two two two. There was there was a comprehensively forms being used over there in some of the assignments and some of the uh, exercises. So I'm expecting that to be so. We'll see that what is the difference, what, what is different here in forms, number one. And then to create an HTML form is, is very much like how you create HTML form or like, you know, forms in HTML, of course. And as I said, you people might have worked on that. And then we'll just talk about how to process these forms in ExpressJS. And that is that is something interesting, important. And as you might have guessed, and you might, might have seen that in your assignment too as well, you might be needing that one. To, to work on that. So anyhow, so this is basically the topic for today. We'll see how we create forms, how we'll see how, but before going into that, as I said, I will be just, you know, taking a quick, intro, a quick introduction of, uh, as I said, of the promises maybe. So let's, uh, let's, have, a, let's have a quick, uh, quick introduction of promises. So, you know, uh, so can anyone give me a definition of promise? Definition means how you can just you know uh, elaborate what what are promises. Anyone, if anyone can elaborate that, what are promises? An operation that will eventually finish. Uh, okay, maybe some other explanation. You say that uh, 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 an operation that will eventually finish. It's correct, but uh, uh, this might be this might not be the most appropriate definition. Maybe. In more technical details, so, do, 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 do. it can happen or might not happen too. All right, it can happen or might not happen too. That's another very interesting, uh, interesting concept. Right. Anyone else? What are promises? So you have given a very good concept. It can happen or might not happen. So that's quite an understanding. Running a promise will add an operation to the end of the event loop to run it after the current queue of operation yeah that's 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 very good so you have you have given a complete technical detail of that and yes i'll talk about that let's let's wait for one more definition because you two people have given a very good concepts Ramila says I, it can happen or might not happen to and you say that it's a promise that will be uh, that will add the operation to the end of the event loop yes you're right so we want to add something towards the end anyone else one more definition from someone else other than these two people who have just already given good definition. It's used for synchronization. That's correct. But again, you are the same person who has already asked, who has already answered the, the question. So I need someone, someone else to jump in other than you two people who have sent last two messages. Mm, yep. Is there anyone who can jump in? Anyhow. So uh, promises is, uh, if I just start from the, from the basic, there is something called a callback functions. And I hope you people know that, but I'll just give you a quick introduction that whenever we want some functions to wait for some other happenings, we want them to wait for some other particular executions. And we call them after some execution, we call them callback functions. And what is the logic behind that? The logic behind that is that I don't want for example, if I just make a, a simple file and I just, you know, uh, just maybe if I just try to, I just, I'm just trying to, you know, give you a good idea. F1, right? So I'm just defining a function one and it's doing nothing but logging in on console. I am F1, right? So this is our function one. And same ways we can just define two, maybe there is a function two as well. I am F2, the function two. And let's take one more, maybe so to so to see the difference of different things. F3 and I am F3. Right? So basically, what I'm saying is that these are the three functions: F1, F2, and F3, just defined, doing nothing, just logging something onto our console. No big deal. There is no no. Uh, you know, no, no rocket science behind that. So if I call them in sequence, of course, and you know that what will happen and they will execute on their turn. 
So let's run them or, and just see what happens with, with our program and how do we want to just make them node server.js. If you run that, you see that, of course, it's just showing me I'm F1, F2, and F3, and it's it's quite an obvious sort of thing. And we just we just we are just saying that these are the these are the uh, logical sequence of these all these functions. Now, one of the way of calling a function is by using the set timeout. So you know the set timeout function. Set timeout. We have used this function in the beginning. So if I pass one of the function into it, for example, I pass F1 into it. Right, and you remember set timeout used to take a few seconds or few times, or you can just you know define something. So if I do something like that, and I say three thousand, right? So what does this three thousand mean? So I'm talking about three seconds. So I want this F one to run after three thousand seconds. Is that right? And let's consider that the output of this F one will become is is important for F two. So unless this F1 is completed, F2 should not run. And unless this F2 is completed, F3 should not run. But that's not the case here. Let's see what happens. If I run that, you see, the first function that I see is M I am F2, then I am F3, and then I am F1. So what's happening? Of course, this function is taking, you know, three seconds to execute. It will execute after three seconds because set timeout function, technical detail or technical, technically what happens? There is something called a function stack, uh, function call stack or calling stack, function call stack. Are you, are you people familiar with function call stack? Yeah, uh, you, are the, you are the only one familiar. <laughs> So there is a there is something called a function call stack. So what we what happens is that when when I was just calling these functions f1, f2, and f3 without this set timeout, so function call stack is was having f1, f2, f3 uh, stored in them and they were executed on their own sequence. But when we do this set timeout, this set timeout is something that takes out this function out of the function call stack, and rather you know when you are talking about a web API, you know, take it to the web API somewhere or with maybe. You just understand that it takes out the function f1 from call stack. Now, what does that mean? There is a call stack, and call stack was supposed to run the way in the way that f1 will execute first, then f2, then f3. But what happened was that we have just called this f1 with the set timeout. So it's taken out from the call stack and it's taken somewhere else, right? So by somewhere else, we mean that it has been now. It's it's independently happening somewhere, and it is waiting for three 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 thousand seconds, uh, three thousand, uh, you know, milliseconds or three seconds, whatever. So it's waiting for three seconds, and whenever these three seconds are over, it will just come back here. But in that time, uh, like you know, the uh, the call stack F two was the second one, and F two executed on its own sequence. F three executed on its own sequence, right? And then when it came back after three seconds, both of these these functions were already ex executed. Now. What do we want? We don't want, for example, we don't want this F2 to execute before this F3 is completed, right? Or maybe we don't want F3 to execute before this F2 is completed. Does that make sense? So what does what what we what we usually do? We can we can just you know we can just pass a function as a parameter to the other one, as we have done this this F1 to the set timeout, and we can just see that. Whenever the execution of that function completes, or that 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 particular event happens, then this function will be executed. Now, this is related to callback function, but I don't want to, you know, go into detail in the callback functions. Rather, what I want is that I want to go for the uh, promises. So this is this is the concept of the call like uh, callback functions, and I hope that you people have a bit a slight of idea. But again, now what are the promises? Promises is also the same that someone said that they might be happening, they might do not, they might not be happening. So basically promises are what? Promises are just like uh, we, we say promises in English, for example, we say that I promise something, something, something like that. And maybe that promise is some, some, sometimes fulfilled, sometimes it's not fulfilled. So if the promise is fulfilled, you say that now, yes, now, I, now someone has made a, that they had made a promise and now that promise has successfully been fulfilled. Or maybe you say that, that someone made a promise, but that promise was failed. They, they, they did not reply. 
so what does that happen is we rather than using callback functions we try to use promises and try to place all though that code that we want to run before something else happens before before the next function happens before something else happens now let's take an example of the for example promise for example i say let promise uh, promise is a, a keyword but again but let promise equal to new promise so this is now with the capital p is the is the right promise that we that we want to talk about now so when we define a promise so promise might have these two like you know uh, uh, there there will be two objects out of that promise and you people have have worked on that maybe you know about that so if i say there will be an object called resolve and that will be called reject so these are the two uh, two states you call it or you you whatever you call it this callback function will have uh, will have these two states a resolve state and a reject state now let's let's call an arrow function over here now you see here this is a promise that we are defining a new promise right and this promise can either be rejected or it can either be resolved sometimes of course it will be resolving sometimes it might be it might be rejecting right so depending upon their uh, upon their success or their failure we want to take certain actions for example we want to take an action related to that particular thing so for example if i say var x equal to uh it can be anything for example i say p plus 3 right and let's check it if x equals equals 3 for example right now you see here i i'm just doing something so what can what what can be the potential things you can do over here maybe going to database and trying to find some that values over here database uh, like you know you are extracting something from that database database extraction you are maybe looking for a json file waiting for a json file we'll see today's example that we'll be waiting for a json file unless that json file is received that that should not happen that should not be working so you can wait you can be waiting for a json file or any other file you are using or waiting or you are just doing some operations that you want to and if this operations get successful again if that operation is successful the operation is successful for example by 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 successful i mean that for example you were looking for something from the database and that was coming as a free plus free whatever and now that is stored and it says x is equal equals equals 3 for example you are looking for this condition right so if x equals equals 3 for example what you will say that you will say that resolve because i was looking for a value that should be something like this successful or maybe just write down promise success right so what i'm doing i'm saying that if x equals equals 3 if x is being coming from a database you are extracting this data from database you are bringing some file as i said in today's example we we'll see we'll be bringing some file over here so if you are bringing some file if you are doing something you have you have that that one uh, you know you can you can just do that operation and you will say that whether that operation is successful or not so else if that that is not the case what might happen is that it means that 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 value has not been found and you know that here i you know that this condition is not true i am looking for x equal to 3 while as x is becoming 6 or whatever so now what i'll say is that i'll say reject and i'll say promise failed right so again considering this code what will happen will will it be will it be successful or or, or rejected yeah considering this one what will happen is it is it a success or a reject is it a resolve or a reject in this situation if you if you just look at it it would be a reject of course and why it would be a reject of course you know that the value which is coming out from the x is not equal to 3 rather it is equal to 6 or whatever and we are we were looking for this for this three value but anyhow let's let's talk about that now how to use that one is that this is this is the interesting part how we can just you know work on that and how we can just wait for as i said they will be will be waiting for this implementation 
this implementation we will be waiting for that like again whatever is happening it happens and then we we'll have to check that whether whether that was successful or not so for that what we'll do is that we'll do promise dot then this is the syntax for this and why i'm telling you the syntax again because we'll be needing that for our today's lecture so promise dot then if promise is basically you know successful promise dot then we call this dot then property of our promise right and what it does is it also returns as a message whatever that will just show us what has happened with our with our promise right so now what i can do is that i can say uh the promise was successfully like you know executed or you can what you call or, or fulfilled not executed fulfilled and it gives with you know with message so whatever message is being coming from that we'll just you know use that one you see so we are saying the promise was successfully filled so what we have done is that we have just you know promise dot then so promise if that is successful you have to just you you will just log it over here right and now it should not be the end there is one more thing remaining if it is not successful what we do is that we we use catch and it's just like you know the try catch block that we use usually use in our uh, you know in our exceptions if you know have you people worked on exceptions anywhere in c sharp or or maybe dot net or maybe in java have you people worked on like uh, <laughs> exceptions so your smiley face means that you have you have worked on that <laughs> yes so anyone else have you people worked on uh, on try catch blockings or you know you, you are familiar with those exception handling it's more or less like that oh you are doing this week okay that's very good so that's very good you'll you'll learn about this is this is very interesting uh, exceptions are very interesting so anyhow so now it will also produce a message of course that something something wrong has happened like your uh, your like you know execution was not successful right so now let's yes this one now the promise was not successfully fulfilled with this message so whatever message is there you just place that message over right so let's save this one and you know we have just seen that this promise will not be fulfilled now if you run that one so you see promise was not successfully fulfilled with 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 promise failed and what was the what was this promise failed message this is the message that we got from this reject right so this was the message that was received and it is showing us that that message it i cleared down now if i if i want to just see that successful message whatever whatever i what i'll do is that i'll for example if i do something like this x equal to 6 of course now it should do what it should successfully successfully run that so you see the promise was successfully fulfilled with promise successful so again this message coming through and this message is being printed over here so now we have we have just got this message so the message that we receive over here is basically the message that we just basically work on and we can we can show that message over there right i hope everyone everyone is getting that and uh, this is this is the this is the way of uh, of accessing these promises or maybe so and why i discuss that because i i'm i'm very much confident that you people have studied that but today i'll be needing these new pro uh, like promises because in today's class i'll be just using them and i'll ask you to have uh, because if you will have that concept we'll be just talking about that here we are using that dot then here we are using that dot catch or whatever we are using we'll be just using it over here. so it's a generic generic overview of that promise and i want you people to understand that and as i said i'll be just just using that one in the so in essence a promise is basically what it's a it's a it's something that might or might not happen during the code and we just basically look for uh, its execution if it happens successfully we do something if it does not happen successfully we do something right so now uh so that's that's again and that that's something that i wanted to just you know give you a quick sense of what and then we'll be just so here you you see that unless this this thing will be happening of course like again if it is resolved 
so unless this all thing will happen it will never go to the resolve and it will all it 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 will never go to the reject by the way so it means that all this happening will be waited and for example it will be waiting for this all happenings that unless this what execution is done we won't be able to just access that those things right so far understandable now so this was something that i wanted to just you know uh, discuss was related to promise that is not part of our that is not directly the part of our uh, like lecture today but again i wanted to you know uh, i wanted you people to know about those those different things so now i want you people to just you know uh, just to start an application with me and today we'll just talk about some interesting uh, the same concepts that you have you have tried on in your in your assignment too and i'm expecting that you people have done that but again today i will be just you know letting you know uh, some some interesting things you might be you might or might not be familiar with so today we'll see that how we can just and and by the way the topic for our like you know discussion is the same we have to discuss these html forms but before going into forms i wanted to have a quick uh, quick sense of a document where you will be just you know using the json data to show over here and then we will be using forms to just you know insert that data to 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 ask that data from the user and things like that right so this is our and and you you must be familiar with 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 these things that this is this is one server that i want to run and to set up this file and i have just open up this week 5 folder and to set up all those things what we can do is that we can we can install express server here and you know oh sorry this is not node install npm install install express here like i want to install express server and i want to install like you know i want to just start a project so i would i would just you know do this all these housekeeping stuff i will ask all of all of you to just do this housekeeping stuff with that and let's let's done that okay one thing i just forgot npm in it we we'll just initialize our project so that we have that package.json just with the default values i just want to go it and another thing if you people remember now have you people started using nodemon you remember we've talked about the nodemon and the nodemon is also an interesting important part for us and you people have uh, you people uh, you, you 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 yes so yes so did you find useful like both of you who have used that did you find it useful again because of our project and it's very useful you can you can just you know run your program file and again as i said when when node one is added you can just you know add one of the one of the uh, you know scripts in that so exam for example i can just you know say uh so start script i'm just telling it to be the node one server.js you know why because we will have this node one installed into it we have that express also We have node one also, so I have this start like start code over here, right? So if I run that, npm run start, right? So we are I'm just running that start one. So it's running app has crashed, console is not defined. So anyhow, we'll see that what is going on. But again, I want to just run that one. Okay, so this small c. All right. Okay, now server is running, so it was I I used it with capital C. Uh, because i'm i'm also teaching you know the <laughs> c sharp course those are c goes capital console dot write line and there are usually i'm doing that console dot log <laughs> anyhow so yes so console dot log server is running so we have got this server that we want to run over here now what we want is that we want to we want to show an html file to user and as i said what is the purpose that we want to have some data in a file we want to bring that data in our in our application and we want to show that data to the user that is particularly what we are what we are trying to do so now let's come to over here and let's create a directory in our week 5 folder and you can call that folder as views you know so always make this now this a habit of that one and inside this view we are creating uh, an html file and if we call it home.html right and i am expecting that you people know how to write html5 code in a short form right so we have got just this html form and here we'll be working on forms in express js right so we'll be working on that forms in express js this is our html document and let's put up an h2 here maybe and show that this is forms in express js and we have to use this forms but again we'll be doing it some some different way so again i'm just repeating that few things for you people for those who are 
who, who do not remember maybe. So now I want to run this file on our local route. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll first of all, I need a path, you know, a path module to be added. I, I hope you people have done that. So if you, if you add a path module and now we need to have a default route, right? And again, I, I am hoping that you people are very much familiar with all these things, of course. And so we are just defining a, a default path. So res dot send file. We want to send a file here. And for that, we'll be using that path module, right? And dot join and you know, dir name comma. Now here it comes. So now where is our file that we want to show? It is inside views slash home dot html right so now our server is running at which we have we have just int intentionally running running it 8080 now let me just run that file and show you what is going on so now it is showing me the this is forms in um, forms in express js so it's it's showing me the output typically the output that i was I was looking for. So now, so far, so good. We have got one HTML page that is running and that HTML page is now very much connected with our server application. And now we have got, we have got this one. So now as you have, you might have done that. Now we will just create a JSON file and not only JSON file, but rather, as I said, we'll be just trying to create now folder basis and we will just go in week five and we'll create another folder and we might call it data. You might have done that for that particular thing. And inside that, I want to create, a, for example, a characters.json file. Why? Because I want to keep all my data of like, you know, I want to just store some of the characters and I will, I will use the form to store those values. I will use the form to, to upload the pictures and all those things. So for that, I'm just doing defining a characters. And here, what I'll do is that I will define, you know, the, the, the JSON type of data that I'll be using for my particular, for my particular file. So let's, let's define some of the some of the comma separated values over here Sorry. and right so let's let's define some of them so now so first first field i'm giving is char id and this is one right the first name and let's uh, alan i usually use alex but since this class already has an Alex, so I'm mean, not using Alex over here, right? Okay. And then we have last name and oh, it should be a colon, not. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Yes, I know, I know you, you're okay with it. So Alan Smith, but let's check email and Alan one at abc.com. And let's talk about that, whether this Alan is a hero or not. So our, out of our characters, there will be some, some heroes or some not heroes. So we'll say that is hero is false. Alan is not hero, right? <laughs> okay, so this is first character that we have defined. And now we can just define multiple characters over here. And that's why I've just taken Alan one. Maybe I'll just defining the same name with different things. So char ID two, just define two or three letters or like, you know, so Alan two, Smith two, and Alan two, right? And now see that Alan two is a hero. Right. So let's maybe take one or more two more. So three, and this is Alan three, this is Smith three, and this is Alan three at abc.com and let's take one more and make it a hero again. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this one will be, I think four, four. Let's take this four. Okay, so what we are doing is that we are just defining the data, you know, for our file and make it a hero. Right, so we have just defined a file, and this file has has basic basically what it has got, like you know the some of the characters name, and I'm, I just 
expect that it's password. Okay. So now, so what we have done, we have just defined a, a, a character's file. And now what we'll do, we just try to read this file. Okay, missing a comma here. So read this file. And after reading this file, what we'll do is that we'll just try to try to run that one. So maybe you people have done that as, again as well. Now in this week five folder, we will create a, you know, server. For, look, I don't want to create it over here. Rather, I want to create it in this one. Oh, still creating that here. Mm -hmm. no. First of all, I'm not. I don't want to create that one. I want to create a file. So, so you can just call it if you if you have worked on that data service .js, and this will be the file that will work for us, and this will provide us the the you know the data services where we will be just using the data services and we will we will just use use this one to read from the character.json and then provide that data to our our server file for the for the execution and now here comes here comes the main part because we'll be extracting data from that one so now to extract data what we'll be using we'll be using first of all we, we require a file system because we are looking for to read a file json file we have to read the json file Right, so JSON file we want to read, and where is that file residing? That file is residing this this character dot JSON from where we we will be just bringing up that data, right? So now what we do is that let's define a, a empty array for storing the values, the values that we will be receiving from our, you know, from our uh, data, uh, you know, characters dot JSON. So we want to store that one, right? So now here comes the important concept that we, that you have uh, you know and you have just worked on that. So what we do is that we will just you know module dot exports. So we can directly define some of the functions, and we can export them from here. Can anyone remind me what was export all about? If you people remember, what was export other than maybe Alex? If someone can just remind me, what was the exports used for? Yeah. Is there anyone who can just remind me what was what was the exports used for? Why did we use our expert uh, export? By the way, uh, transfer data. Yes, transfer data from one file to the other. Remember, transfer data from one file to the other. Now, if you see your assignment also, you are you are required to use the promises. So what you will do over here, you will do what you will just return a promise from here, return new promise, and why what we are doing. Because we will be looking at that character dot JSON data. If we find that, of course, we'll say that the promise was fulfilled. If, it, if we do not find that, of course, we'll say that we were unable to unable to get the data. So this is a promise part over here is starting, right? So if you people have a little understanding, you can just understand that. Resolve and reject. We we'll use these two, these two one, right? And then the error function, right? This error function or the callback function, what will do? What it will go and read file. So we have read file function over here, read file method. And from where we have to read, if you if you see its definition, you can see the definition in your intelligence. First of all, we have to give it the path of the file. So our path of the file is on root. There is a folder called data, and there is a file called characters.json. Right? So characters.json. So what do we see? We say that go and read the file characters.json. And again, we know that they, this might be a successful operation or might not be a successful operation. Right? So there, 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 there might be there might be like you know both of the options. So another parameter that we need to give is the text format UTF-8. We give this is one of the parameters that we want to give over here. And the last parameter is the callback function again, which might be called in in case of uh, like you know if if error has occurred it will be called or if you know the the data is successfully transferred it will be called right so now what we do so if error occurs if error happens what we need to do we need to reject you know because we are coming through what we are coming through this promise is that right 
so if that file is not able to if it is not op able to this open this file do what you just go because this error has happened you just re return this message as error and return from here i don't want it to execute why because the promise is you know rejected why because the error has occurred the file was not found and we'll run that when see that what is what is happening and how we can just do that but if that was not the case we have got an array of characters that we have defined at the top right for that what we'll do that we will whatever whatever data has been received so you know if if the error has not occurred it means there is some data that has been received by this promise now this data which is coming from this file we need to we need to use that data and you know i can just define data as something like that but i hope you know that there are different functions to convert data into that if, if you want to parse that data so you know what is that there is a function called parse how many of you know parse json dot parse function because you know we want to parse that data that has been received into the json format so that it is stored in a json format in our characters array is that clear to everyone so characters is equal to json dot parse data whatever data has been received just go and parse that into json and store that in characters right and now since it has done it has been done it means we have reached to a very you know a calm state which was a resolved state it means now our file has been found and the data is now available to us is that right so what is that let's let's discuss it again let's discuss it again we said that we are just defining an initialize function over here that will be used to initialize our page now that will be used to initialize our server now this server will now depend upon this data which is initialized by through this html server, like a data service right so we are just defining an initialize function which does what which goes to read a file from characters.json which is available over here data/characters.json and we have said that if if error occurs you see reject error and if if the data is if there is no error it means the data was successfully received you just parse that data and 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 do the resolve type got everyone now if i want to use this data in my main file server file what i need to do yes anyone i need to i need to use that one and i need to basically yes thank you we, we, i need to basically require that data so i will just require that file and what is that file it is data data dash service dot js right so that is exporting and i want to receive that data over here is that clear now not only this as i said now our application this all application will depend upon something which is called as i as i said something which is called that is application should initialize should call that function first and if that data is available then only this application should run otherwise this application should not run what does that mean this app dot listen you know app dot listen just gives us the the port number and then it shows us the server is running or something like that right so now what we are saying that first of all what you have to do just go into that let me let me just make it a comment and see what we are doing and we have just closed this app dot listen right if i save that of course it might might server not be you know server not be running because app dot listen is not working so what i do over here i say data dot initialize if data dot initialize is successful was it returning a promise you remember so if it is returning a promise then do what use the then right and now here you can use both of the syntax i can use a function syntax you remember we can use this function syntax or maybe you can use that the other syntax if you want that is that is up to you totally up to you right so the function syntax i want to run this function and what i want to say i say that app dot listen right and here i'm just giving myself 8080 port and now another i want to run a function over here right i want to close that one as well 
So I don't. I want to run a function here. And now this will just console. Sorry, with with capital C again. Console dot log, and I will say that server running. And eight zero eight zero because we know here that where it is running. So server running at eight zero eight zero. Right. So this one, this one is the end of this function. Looks like I just made a mistake. Oh, using the function also and using the arrow arrow parameter as well. Now this this is the end of this function, but this was the end of this. You know, uh, this then this then is completing over here. You can see this yellow uh, this yellow uh, you know parenthesis is ending over here. Now one thing is remaining. We have just done was then part. We have just covered the then part. What what part is remaining over here? The catch. If catch happens, like again, if there is a problem, you do something like that. So it means there is some error has happened. So if there is some error happened, do what? Console dot log. Unable to start the server, right? And you can just write down the error message as well over here. Now understand everyone what we are doing. We are saying that data dot initialize. Just go and call that initialize function, and then if it is successful, everything is going fine. Just go and print server running at eight zero eight zero. I need some feedback. People are getting that. So now because this 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 is going successful, it is just coming over here and it is just saying server running at eight zero eight zero. Why? Because the no no problem has happened over there. Everything has gone successfully. This initialize function, this initialize function has successfully received the data, and basically it is it is just you know it has been it has been run, and now our our main server file is also running, and if you see that our server is running at eight zero eight, right? So it means now we are good to go. We have got the data available. And we have got only one path right now. And if I if I just run my server, you see that what is doing? It's just, of course, if a server is running, of course, it will be just showing the same file. We have not done anything at all. Now, what I want to do? I want to add a route, not only to get the data, but also I want to just print all those characters maybe in a, in a uh, in in one of the one of the path. So let's let's define that path first, and then we'll work on that path. So now, we have only one path over here. So if I say If someone goes to characters, I want to I want to add those characters. Access dot characters. So request dot uh, request and response. Right, request and response. Do what now? First of all, what do what what do I want uh, over here? I want to show all the characters that I have saved in this file into my server when someone goes to characters path. Right. so i'll i'll come back to that but first of all of course what i am doing is that maybe is dot send i'm just just showing you h2 uh characters data here so again just just mentioning it and i'll change that one just checking that whether it is working the character route so i'll just try to show the characters over here right let me just show if characters path is working so we have just made a path path level so yes characters data here it means it's working for us now what i want is that i want to have all those characters information over here for that what i need to do is that i will have to i, I will have to just define a function and the function will be defined over here over there you know in our data service file that function will be will 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 enable us to basically get all the so again come come over here and what you can do so by leave it open so what we can do that we can just do something like that module dot exports right dot get all characters so we are creating a function for it equal to function now what does that mean this this will be a function that will bring up all the characters from that from that json file this file this will bring all those characters right so now this file will also return a promise you, re you remember you have to you, you are explicitly asked to always use the promises so it will also return a promise and what promise resolve reject right 
Now let's talk about that. What they will be doing. Right? So now, if they are returning something, it means that there should be a data in the characters. You know, we have got the characters, uh, characters, uh, you know, array over here, which is populated with JSON parts, uh, JSON dot parts if the data was successfully transferred. So now I will check what? I will check characters dot length. I'll check this length. If length is equal to zero, it means there was no data being received to us, right? So if something was not received, what we'll do? We'll do reject. No results found. Zero records. So if there are no record found, it will just say that no record. Why? Because character's length is zero. And character length zero means that there were no characters being, being used over there. Just use a return over there, and it means we have rejected over there. But if that was not the case, it means that we have got resolve. And what resolve? We'll just pass on what? The characters, all the data that we have found over. Right? Everyone understand that? I need some feedback from you people, from, from those who are, of course, who might have some, some of the confusion. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I've got one of the feedback. So again, so now what we are doing is that now this is just returning this get all characters and we can use this get all characters function now in our in our main server dot file. And that, that will just, just work for, for us. Now let's go back to our server file and where we want to use it, we want to use it over here. I don't want this, this, this data now. I want to have that typically this data offer. So now if I want to access that, we have got the data object over here, not initialize what I want over here. I want get all characters. Right, data dot get all characters. What does this data dot get, uh, get all characters will return? If you see here, not here. This one, what does it return? You know, it returns a promise. So it means I need to catch that promise. I need to work on that promise. Is that right? So I have to do what? I will just check first of all then. So if it is successful, it means data was received. Now, if data was received, what you have to do? res dot JSON data and you just return this response with the JSON data that you go and cache that JSON, uh, uh, JSON data. Got everyone? What is remaining now? Yes, anyone, what is remaining now? The catch part, right? The catch part, right? And the catch part will contain again, will have an error if error happens and it, we can just send the response of error to the user that now this error has been found. Right? So it means go and just get all the characters from that. one. So now let's run it. If we see that successfully it is running or not, and if it is running, you see here, it shows all the data from our file, whatever file we had. Right, everyone? So what it is doing, it's basically just, you know, going uh, because slash characters, it's going into the get all characters. And what is the get all characters? This function is doing what? Returning a promise and a promise when there is some data, it returns this, uh, this one. And if there is no data, it says that found zero record. So let's do it. Let's go and start doing something, play with it. If I just control X, I've just cut that one, right? Okay. Unexpected end of JSON input. Okay, we need to handle that one as well. Da, da, da. We just handle that one as well. Okay, just hold on a minute. Hmm. Okay, so let's 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 first of all do something different over here. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Let's start with this one. And we are saying that we have got a file. Okay, so no such file. Data. So you see here, now it's basically doing what? This, this file is not found over there. So it's not starting the, the server. Rather, it should give this as an error to that one. Hmm. It says that there is no characters one dot data. 
Okay, just hold on a minute and uh, let me just pause recording for.